Here's another Christmas decoration how-to. Look around the internet and you'll find all kinds of Christmas tree boxes. These have gotten really popular. And look around YouTube and you'll find several how to build a Christmas tree box or Christmas tree collar or whatever you want to call them. It's the wooden version of a Christmas tree skirt. What you won't find too many of is a trapezoidal Christmas tree box. Whether you want to make one of these for your own home or you want to make these and sell them like I am, I'm going to show you step by step how I made this one. And I also have the step by step instructions and a cut list in the description below this video. I've also broken this video down into chapters you can skip ahead to whatever section you want to see. This trapezoidal tree collar is built in two sections so it can easily fold down for storage or you can use the optional top or bottom to turn it into a box for storing other Christmas decorations. Welcome to my wood shop. My name's Brett. I know this looks a little silly, this little Christmas tree on this big box, but this is the smallest tree that we have and it's the only one that would fit in my shop which has seven foot ceilings. So I want to give you a quick demo. So you can use this tree stand to put the tree on and raise it up a little bit, or uh, you gotta carefully do this. <laughs> this thing barely fits on my table saw. This top just lifts right out. You can put it around your tree to hide your tree stand. There's a lot to cover in this video, so let's get to the build. I'm using cedar fence pickets that are supposed to be 5 8 by 5 half inches by 6 feet long. A lot of times they're closer to half an inch thick. And they come rough sawn, so they're a little fuzzy. So I'm going to run these through the planer. If you don't have a planer, you could sand these down with 40 grit sandpaper to get similar results. Or you could just go buy 1 by 6 pine or cedar boards that aren't rough sawn instead. The fence pickets are cheap, about $4 each. That's why I'm using them. The first cut we're going to make on the miter saw is to cut these down to length before taking them over to the table saw. Cutting to length first helps alleviate some of the bow that you'll inevitably find in these boards. I mark each piece on the back with a pencil as I cut them so I don't get confused as to which part is which. You may notice too that I have my cut list written out on the whiteboard. See, they're not even five and a half inches wide, more like five and three eighths. At the table saw, we'll rip off one edge and then flip it around so the new straight edge is up against the fence and then cut the eight pieces to five inches wide. The two boards for the lid of the box need to stay as wide as possible, so I only trimmed off a little bit to straighten them out for gluing into a panel. I didn't show that here. At this point, you'll want to look at your boards and decide which side you want facing out, and that will be your show face. Next, we're going to tilt the table saw blade to 30 degrees off of square, or 60 degrees from the table. With the show face up, you're going to trim off the bottom edge of your bottom boards to make a 30 degree bevel, leaving the whole 5 inches on the face. These are parts A1 and B1. When you're done with that, just leave the saw set up like it is. We'll be making another 30 degree bevel in a later step. Back over to the miter saw. We're going to set the miter at 26 and a half degrees to the right. And we're also going to set the bevel by tilting the blade 14 and a half degrees to the right. Now with the top edge of each board up against the fence and the show face down, make your cut. Do this to all eight boards. Then we're going to make the opposite cut on the left side of each board. 26 and a half degree miter to the left and 14 and a half degrees tilted to the left. Still with the show face down. When you're done, you should have a trapezoid with the long point of the bevel on the back side of each board. Next we're going to mark these on the back to drill some pocket holes.
Now we're back at the table saw to put that 30 degree bevel on the top edge of these panels. For this, you'll need to put the show face down and the pocket holes up. While we're at the table saw, we might as well rip down the trim strips. I'm using two different widths of trim. One inch for the sides and bottom, and an inch and a half for the top. You'll see why in a bit. You may end up needing more than one 1x6 for these trim pieces. Once again, back to the miter saw. The trim pieces do not have a bevel on them, so you can reset the saw to 90 degrees. Whoop! Hey Brett, don't forget your safety glasses. For the eight side pieces, I set up a stop block, and then before every cut, I flip the piece over to get opposite miters. Then we're just going to glue and tack these on with a 23 gauge headless pin nailer, just until the glue dries. These are 3 quarter inch pin nails. My stupid nail gun keeps opening up. So frustrating. Does anyone want to sponsor me to try out their new cordless pin nailer? Okay, now this is the tricky part. Holding these together to drill the hinges is a real bugaboo. I tried to clamp it together, but that didn't work very well. So I ended up screwing a square block to my assembly table to support the A side, which is also supported on the back by my table saw fence. The B panel should go inside the A panel. It also helps to have a support stick screwed to the bottom. If I didn't mention it before, these are being assembled upside down. I'm using a self-centering drill bit to drill the pilot holes. I think the brass hinges are a nice touch. What do you think? Everything's looking nice and square. Now we can measure the top for the lid. This is where those wider trim pieces come into play. They're about half an inch taller than the side panels, so the top can fit inside and not slide off. To make this top panel, I drilled pocket holes in both directions. Maybe a little overkill, but that's okay. And I'm gluing and screwing these together. A little sanding, a little trimming, I don't want to say that I came up with this idea, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone do this. In order to keep from blowing out the back side of my holes, I only go part way and then make a small pilot hole so I can finish the hole from the other side. I've seen people drill from both sides with a Forstner bit before, but switching drill bits and drilling a small pilot hole through the center is the part that I've not seen before. 
Not bad. Here I'm just rounding over the rough edges with my palm router. One last step before a final sanding and decorating. Installing the slip pin hinges on the other two corners so it can be locked together and then taken apart. I meant to order double offset hinges, but this is what came. They're not offset at all, so I need to install a little shim behind the mounting plates to bring them out from the surface a bit. I pre-drilled and pre-installed the screws to make this process go a lot easier. Now all that's left to do is to decorate it however you want. I used some stencils and acrylic paint to add some detail to mine. You could paint the whole thing white or whatever color you want. It's completely up to you. One feature I didn't show you is how this thing converts from a stand to a box. So this lid is just sitting in here. And then these two parts come apart with the slip hinges. You just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does come apart. There! Oh my gosh. Okay, so you don't actually need to put it together. You can just kind of set it together like that. Wow, this thing barely fits on my table saw. And it'll, it'll stay like that under the tree. Um, whew, I'm out of breath. And then... These fold up. For storage. Or, you can flip it upside down. Put the hinges back together. There we go. Alright, now it's locked together. You can just put the bottom in. There. And now that's in there and that's not going to fall out because it's tapered. I made this top out of plywood off camera because look what happened to this one. This one was flat when I glued it up, but overnight it turned into a potato chip. That can happen sometimes with solid wood, you just never know. So you might want to go with plywood, which is a lot more dimensionally stable if you're going to make one of these top slash bottoms. Otherwise, you don't even need to make this. You can just make the tree collar and then obviously it won't be a box or it won't be a tree stand. So now that you know how it's made, you can probably knock one of these out in a weekend. So give it a try. Again, I have the step-by-step -step process written out and the complete cut list in the description below this video. If you want printed plans, I personally don't have those, but you could go to Matthew Peach's video and he has printed plans available on his Etsy store for the same trapezoidal tree box stand without the lid. If you're interested in having printed plans, I'll add a link to his video in the description as well. Until next time, my friends, be safe and love each other. What you won't find too many of is a trapezoidal tree box stand. That's hard to say. <laughs> just, just this easy. Pull them apart.